1 Timothy 4, 1. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly. Talking about the Holy Spirit. I was reading that one time, and the, Holy, and the Lord spoke up to my spirit, and he said, he always does. <laughs> expressly means clearly. If it's not clear, it's on our end. It's fuzzy. The Spirit speaks expressly that in the latter times, anybody think we're in the latter times? Some, not all, shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies in uh, hypocrisy, and here's why, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Amen. Having their conscience seared with a hot iron. I was awakened the other morning, and the Lord started talking to me about the issues of conscience. Well, your conscience, and I'm going to preach on it tonight. I'm going to talk about not injuring your conscience. Because, you know, by overriding, uh, or, or let's put it this way, not injuring your faith because of overriding your conscience. People say, should I follow my conscience? Well, Paul said he always did. We might look at some of that tonight. Um, uh, it's a good guide for the believer, especially if you're, spirit, if you're growing spiritually. There are conditions where believers... Their spirit, their, their conscience will let them do things yeah. that, yeah. that really uh, they shouldn't be doing. Yeah. But uh, that's because they're seared. Here he said yeah. their conscience was seared yeah. with a hot iron. Yeah. You know, you, you uh, uh, Brother Hagin told the story about a man who could, he put, boil, he put coffee on the old wood stove yeah. till it was boiling. And then he poured in a cup and it's still moving, you know. And he just tilted it up and you drink it down. Yeah. And Brother Higgins said he saw this man do it one time, and he, he didn't even feel the hot going down his own throat. But he went, ah! He said he, he, said he almost felt it himself, just, just even though it wasn't him drinking it. And, but the man didn't even, it didn't even bother him because he had done that so much that he had seared his esophagus. He seared his throat. Well, I remember whenever I was, uh, you know, working on the farm, grew up working on the farm. You know, you work physically, you work with your hands. And uh, I had, you know, I, I didn't, we didn't wear gloves. I mean, gloves were sissies. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I had, I had calluses all over my hands. I wear gloves today because I don't have those calluses anymore. And I, I hurt myself much quicker. <laughs> My sister loves me, but she shook my hand about 10 years ago. She said, man, your hands are soft. I said, it's good you're a girl. I just hit you. Because you know? I don't work physically like I used to. That doesn't mean I don't work. I work spiritually in, in different things. But, but I, I do work some there on the, the land, but I, I wear gloves. But anyway, I, back then on the farm... I, I didn't wear gloves. So we just had real calloused hands. I distinctly remember one day sitting between loads of baled hay, unloading baled hay, sitting between uh, drinking the coldest water glass. My mom, she'd bring up these jugs of water full of ice, and we'd chug them down. I mean, it's summertime. No, you, you haven't half lived if you have an unloaded baled hay in the middle of the summertime. That's, 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 you, you're a sissy if you haven't done that, you know. <laughs> or been up at the top of the hay mound on the elevator whenever it came up there and there's no breeze going up there and you're breathing in all that dust and it's it's a it's 95 outside up there it's 110 you know anyway see I've done that so I'm not a sissy but but anyway, so, but I remember my mom, she'd be, we were between loads of hay, unloading hay, and she, she brought this water up, and I sat there drinking that water, and I got my pocket knife out, and I started carving oh, yeah. Yeah. right in that callus right there. And I don't remember what I carved, but I carved something right on that callus and didn't even feel it. Yeah. 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 See, that's what he means when he talks yes, about sir. the conscience being yes, seared. Your conscience can be like that. Yes. Yes. You can do things. Yeah. That, that you shouldn't be doing right. and your conscience not even bother you about it. Yes, sir. Right there. That's real good. Amen. Amen. Because you seared it or you, you're callous. Yeah. Remember yeah. Jesus said, Mark, I mean, really Matthew 13, 15, 13, no, 13 somewhere in there, but it's the parable of the sword. He talked to him. He said, uh, talking about the children of Israel, he said, you, your eyes you have closed, that's at any time, and your, your hearts are dull or your ears are dull of hearing. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. And uh, your, your spirits are not perceptive. So dull is the same thing as calloused. Uh, all right. 
just like a callus, you know, you yeah. carve on a callus on your hand. Well, you're, you're, you're insensitive. That's what yeah. that means. Yes, Dull or callus means yes. insensitive. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So the Bible tells us to not have a seared conscience yeah. Yeah. or it tells us to have a good, to live with a good conscience. Yeah. 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 We'll look at some of these yeah. verses. Yeah. In other words, we're not to override our conscience. Right. Right. Because that'll dull our spirits. Right. And that'll make us insensitive. Yes, sir. Um, uh, and, and then we'll be able to do things that we shouldn't be doing. And it'll hinder our faith. It'll yes. injure our faith. Yes. Uh, the, what, but let's talk about the conscience. What is the conscience? The conscience is different than the inner witness. Yes. Now, uh, you have to rightly divide some things. Because uh, the conscience is really the voice of your own spirit. Yes. You're a spirit being, you know. Yes, Paul sir. said, I pray God, 1 yes. Timothy 5, 23, I pray God your whole spirit, remember, soul and body, yes, be preserved blameless. You are a spirit, you have a soul, you live inside of a body. Yes. Uh, and each one of those parts of your being has a voice. Yes. Right. The conscience is the voice of your own spirit. Yes. Amen. Uh, the ra rational thought, there's actually uh, emotions in the soul also. Yeah. Uh, there's the, mind, the, the soul is made up of the mind, will, and emotions, but rational thought is the voice of your mind. Yeah. Yeah. Or emotions are the voice of your uh, soul. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Uh, and people get confused about those things yeah. because, uh, you know, they say, God's leading me because I fell in love. Mm -hmm. Well... <laughs> It could be God. It could not be love, God. Because those are emotions. You're really re referring to emotions. When you fell in love. Amen. I don't know what that means, fall in love. But I do know what it means. But I mean, it's like they're tripping, you know. It's like, amen. But anyway, so, so that, that's a lot of times they're just talking about their feelings, their emotions. Really, we say feelings, and sometimes we're talking about the body. Sometimes right. we're talking about the emotions. Yes. So, but anyway, but then you got the voice of your con the voice of your spirit, your conscience, the voice of your mind's rational thought, the voice of your 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 soul, the deeper part of the soul is the emotions, and then the voice of the body is feelings. Poke your neighbor in the arm to say, "Did you feel that?" Yeah. So, how do you know I hit you? Well, they felt that. Yeah. Yeah. They felt that. Yeah. That's the voice of their body. Amen? We're revelating now, aren't we? <laughs> but so the, 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 the spirit, your spirit man has a voice. Right. You might say, isn't that the inner witness? No, the inner witness is not a voice. Right. The Holy Spirit does have a voice. Right. Yes, <laughs> I don't want to confuse you, but, but, but you've got to realize the Holy Spirit, how many, when he, the spirit of truth has come, he will speak. He'll not speak of himself, but whatever he hears, that will he speak. The Holy Spirit does speak. He does have a voice. Yes. But that's not your conscience. Right. Yeah. The, see, the Holy Spirit is not your spirit, and your spirit is not the Holy Spirit. Right. You're the temple of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. In other words, your spirit's the temple of the Holy Spirit, yeah. but there's still two distinct spirits, your spirit and, and the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Yes. And each of them have a voice. The spirit, your spirit's voice is conscience, and the Holy Spirit's voice is, well, the Holy Spirit's voice. That's his voice. Yeah. But, but then there's something even different than all of that called the inner witness. Right. And that's not a voice. That's just an inner knowing or an inner peace. Someone asked me one time, what's the difference between the, the, the voice of the Spirit and the witness of the Spirit? I said, and I said it by revelation. I never thought of it before. But I said, well, when the Spirit speaks, the words will come to you. That's right. Yeah, but, but uh, and you'll be able to say what he said. Yeah. But whenever you have the inner witness, there's not necessarily words come to you, but there's a knowing come, comes to you. And, so, and, and sometimes you can't even express how you know and what you know, but you just know. You know what I'm talking about? But it wasn't a voice. There's times the Holy Spirit has spoken to me and I can repeat and have done, repeated to you what he said. Now there's other times I just say, I just, it just seems good to me and to the Holy Ghost. You know, we should do this or go this direction. Well, that's not, a, that's not the Spirit's voice. That's not my voice. I mean, excuse me, my Spirit's voice. That's just the inner witness. Amen. And you really, but when the Bible talks about, in the Old Testament, it talks about the still, small voice. You ever read that? 
That's the voice of your own spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the fact that it's a still small voice makes it easy to override. Other translations say gentle. Gentle. It's not very, it's not very authoritative. Brother Hagin always said the voice of the Holy Spirit is more authoritative. But the voice of your own spirit is not that authoritative. It's more gentle. Amen. And listen, don't misunderstand me. I don't, I don't want to confuse you. But sometimes, because the Holy Spirit lives in your spirit, you will, your spirit will pick things up from the Holy Spirit and know something because the Holy Spirit dwells in you and is passing it on to your, to your spirit. And then your own spirit will pass it on to you in the voice of conscience. Paul referred to that. Go to Romans 9.1 there. Notice, notice he, he described it. In Romans 9, 1, he said, uh, I say the truth in Christ. I don't remember how he starts that, but I think he starts out, yeah, I say the truth in Christ and lie not. Then he said this, my conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost. Yes. Notice he said that in the Holy Ghost. In other words, the Holy Ghost is letting me know this is true, that I'm getting ready to say, what I'm getting ready to say in verse 2 is true. The Holy Ghost is letting me know that's true. And my spirit, which the voice of my spirit, my, which is my conscience, is passing that on to me. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. 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 I told you the other service, I guess it was Sunday morning or night, I don't remember. But I said to you that I was in a city and I said to you, I actually didn't say it the way it happened. I said to you, the Holy Spirit said to me, and, and it came to me in the words. Yeah. There's a further plan for your ministry yes. here. Yes. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes. But that isn't actually what, what came to me. Yes, I should actually clarify it because not that it really makes any difference. It was God yes. passing it on to my spirit. But, but what came, the, the actual words that floated up out of my spirit, totally shocking to me, yes, sir. but floated up out of my spirit was there is a further plan for our ministry here. He didn't say there is a further plan for your ministry. He said, I, the, my spirit said, told me there is a further plan for our ministry here. Yes. If it would have been for your ministry, that would have been God talking to me. But whenever the, 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 the voice said, there is a further plan for your ministry here, yes. your means the, me, my spirit is talking to me. In fact, I think, I'd have to go back and look at it, I think it actually came, there's a further plan for our ministry here. That's actually, that, that, now I remember, that's actually how he said, yes, my spirit said it. He picked that up from the Holy Ghost yeah. and passed it on to me yeah. in a voice. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Did you hear that? Yes, sir. Yeah. Well, why is this all important? It's extremely important. You override these things and you'll injure your faith. Well, look at that. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Praise the Lord. You learning anything? Yes, sir. Tell your neighbor, I don't want to just come to church feel good. I want to learn something. <clears throat> so your conscience is the voice of your own human spirit. And it's separate and distinct from the, the Holy Spirit, I mean the voice of the Holy Spirit, or the inner witness. And really the Bible tells us, Paul actually said over and over again, he said, my, he, there in Romans, we just read it, Romans 9.1, he, he always uh, stayed true to his conscience. And he taught, let me just give you another verse here, Acts 23, verse number 1. He earnestly beholding, this is Paul, earnestly beholding the council said, men and brethren, I have lived in all good conscience before God until this day. Rome, that's Acts 23, 1. Verse 20, or, uh, chapter 24, verse 16. Herein do I exercise myself to have always a conscience void of offense towards God and towards men. Yes. Amen. Yes. Oh, that's good right there. That'll preach. I, I exercise myself to have always a conscience void of offense. A conscience that's void of offense is a conscience that's not bothering you. It's a good, clear conscience. He said, I've lived in all good conscience. There in the uh, 23rd chapter, verse 1. I've lived in all good conscience. Notice that, good conscience. Now, let's just look at a couple of verses. 2 Timothy 1.3. I thank God whom I serve from my forefathers with pure conscience. I want you to see these terms. Good conscience, pure conscience, 
my conscience also bearing me witness in other words I'm not lying about this you ever said something and your conscience said that's not true yeah. <laughs> I have yeah. just happened the other day oh. Woo, man oh man I'm like yep 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 that's not true that's not true I'm, I'm sorry <laughs> yes, sir. amen yes, sir. see we can't override those things and stay sensitive to the Holy Ghost it'll start hindering our faith <laughs> people they get all confused about faith they just think faith is pulling levers pushing buttons and out comes the healing out of the heavenly slot machine or some blessing no you gotta you gotta there's much more to faith than what most people realize we'll see it as we go amen he said I serve God for my forefathers with a pure conscience now 2 Corinthians 1 12 I just like these verses you ought to write them down I mean if I've done all this studying for you don't just kind of don't just kind of say that was good no write them, write them down save you a lot of study 2 Corinthians 1 12 actually this all came to me within I think a half hour just down the Holy Ghost just started downloading them 2 Corinthians 1 12 for our rejoicing is this the testimony of our conscience that in simplicity and godly sincerity not with fleshly wisdom but with the grace of God we have lived we have had our conversation that means lifestyle in the world more abundantly to you now this in other words our rejoicing is this the testimony of our conscience in other words Paul lived in such a way that his conscience always caused him to rejoice Amen. do you see that yeah. I live he said our rejoicing is this the testimony of our conscience. In other words, your conscience can cause you to rejoice or else it can smite you. Yeah, yeah that's good. Yeah, that's good. It, it can convict you. That's right. That's right. Yeah. You, you look at the chapter there in uh, John's gospel. John, I mean, Jesus was talking to the uh, woman caught in the, in the act of adultery. You remember that? And uh, the Bible said that uh, John 8 verse 9 the Bible said that he stood they, they brought her to him and he uh, they, they said well we found her and caught her in the very act of adultery what do you I mean the law says to stone her what do you say remember he's writing on the ground and they're waiting on him and he finally looked up and said he that's without sin let him cast the first stone and listen to the ninth verse there John 8 it says uh, and they which heard it being convicted in their own conscience went out one by one beginning at the eldest even unto the last in other words the older ones had more sin that their conscience convicted them about <laughs> and Jesus was left alone and the woman standing in the midst and you remember you know neither do I condemn you and so forth and so on but notice that convicted in their own conscience your own conscience will convict you it'll smite you and you can't override that and be in faith you can go through all the motions you can make all the confessions you can sound like a faith man woman but that doesn't make you a faith man or woman if, you're bother if your spirit's bothering you the conscience is bothering you then you're not in faith you, you can act like it but you're not and those kind of things happen and people don't receive and then they, people create new doctors well see that faith business doesn't work no it does work but you got to work it and you can't have you can't have something bothering your conscience I laugh people think they have a good conscience you know maybe about who they're dating or something and you know it doesn't bother me who I'm dating but they try to hide it from people well why are you trying to hide it is something bothering you something bothering you see your, your own spirit's telling you that's not right amen see we just hit home I think everybody just understood that one right there see they, they, you, can, you can act like nothing's bothering you and that doesn't mean it's not now I'm not trying to preach everybody into conviction tonight but I'm just saying th these things can be true and so never ever ever accuse God if somebody doesn't receive don't ever accuse God it wasn't on his side I said it wasn't on his side all right now that so their conscience convicted them here's another verse you ought to write this down I'm, I don't know you're just Romans 2 verse number 5 excuse me Romans 2 verse 15 he talks about the work of the law written in our hearts and our conscience also bearing witness and their thoughts the meanwhile accusing or else excusing one another 
Notice that. Our conscience will accuse you, us or excuse us. Woo. <laughs> Amen. Amen. One thing, you, you, ever, you ever started talking critically about somebody? And your spirit started, st started talking to you? Don't say that. Don't say that. Don't say that. Yes, sir. Huh? See, that's your own spirit talking to you. It'll accuse you and say, that's not right. That's not right. Don't do that. Yeah, we're not supposed to be like the woman who uh, some friends, uh, it was New Year's Eve, and, uh, uh, and so they went out for, you know, dinner or whatever and fellowship together. And uh, the pe person they went out with, the wife, <coughs> was a known gossip. And they were talking, and she started criticizing people. And it was getting later and later, closer to midnight. She, she's talking more and more, criticizing people, talking critically of people. And the closer they got to midnight, the more she sped up. She looked at her watch. She said, I got, I, I got, I got three minutes to tell you about this last person. So, because I've got a, a New Year's resolution to quit talking about people. <laughs> uh, that's not the way we're supposed to live. <laughs> not supposed to live that way see what we're talking about is not a new year's resolution it's a lifestyle all the time <laughs> amen so her conscience was accusing her amen so that's an area of the holy ghost or, or or actually sometimes it's the holy ghost sometimes it's your own conscience will talk to you about amen another one's about forgiving people and loving people how about this one? How about walking in love? And how about, uh, how about living holy? You ever started watching something on YouTube or watching something on TV and your conscience said, no, you shouldn't be doing this? See, right, what you do right there determines whether you fall into sin or not. Sin? You mean if I override my conscience, it's sin? Yeah. Go to the 14th chapter of Romans. It's pretty tight, but it's right, huh? Yes, sir. Boy, this will keep your faith working, though. 14th chapter of Romans is something that's very, very, very interesting. 14th chapter of Romans. Make sure you find it. Don't you dare not find it. 14th chapter of Romans. Look what it says in verse number. Let me find it here myself. 14th chapter of Romans. I, gotta just, I don't bring my physical Bible anymore. I don't, it took me a long time to get used to that, but it just is so much easier. Romans 14, look at verse number 23. He said, now, now, before you read this, the whole context is matters and issues of, of the 14th chapter is issues of conscience. Yes. Not causing our brother to stumble and so forth yes. and, uh, and so forth, so that that's not on our conscience. Then he said, and he that doubts, he's talking about eating things sacrificed to idols. That, that his conscience is bothering him about. That's the context. You can read that and find out that that's true. He that doubts from the context, and here he actually says, he that doubts is damned. We'd say condemned if he eats. So what he's talking about is, if a man's conscience is bothering him about eating something sacrificed to idols, you look at the context, then, then, then he's doing it in doubt when he eats. Right? You following that? Then notice what the rest of the verse says. He that doubts, he that doubts is damned or condemned, in other words, in his own conscience, if he eats, because he eats not of faith. For whatsoever is not of faith is sin. Yay, yay, yay. So here, faith is not something that comes because of hearing the word. I didn't say faith isn't something that comes here. I said here, he's talking about something different than faith that comes from the Word. Here he's talking about assurance in your own spirit about what you're doing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And not having conviction against what you're doing. Isn't that what he's talking about? And he says you can get out of faith because you're, you're overriding your own, your own spirit and doing something that your spirit says don't do that. Don't do that. Then he calls it sin. If we, if we override it and do it anyway, he calls it sin. Whoa. See, when we built our house, that was one of the things I had to work through. 
I had to make sure my conscience wasn't bothering me about, you know, building that, that yeah. kind of a, a house. Yeah. 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 That's true. Amen. Well, so, well, doesn't God want you to be blessed? Yeah, but there's more to it than God yeah. wants you to be blessed. Yeah. There's, there's making sure you're not stretching your faith beyond your measure yeah. Yeah. and making sure you've got the, the faith available to do the plan of God yeah. with that yeah. kind of expense on yeah. you. Yeah. 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 Amen. Amen. Now, I had to get that all worked out. Yes. Yes. Amen. I got it worked out. Praise yes. God. But it was just at the edge. Yeah. <laughs> but I was within the measure of faith. Never have thought about it. I mean, before, before we got it built, the devil tried to tell me, what are you, how are you going to pay for this? Yeah. But, but, but when we moved in, never have thought about it since. It's been yeah. so easy. Amen. 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 You might not believe it, but because of the, how much we were putting on the land to pay it off, our expenses didn't even go up whenever we moved into the house. You know, the overall amount we needed every month. Yeah. But, but uh, so yeah, we, but see, you got to work those things out. Yes. Work it out within your own spirit. Yes. You, you can't over, you can't, uh, you, you've heard the statement, you can't separate faith from being led by the spirit. Yes. Well, conscience is a little different than the leading of the spirit, although it can be the same thing. I'll, I'll explain that. Uh, meaning that somebody's conscience that's picking something up but from the Holy Spirit is, is basically telling them what the Holy Spirit's saying. So it's the leading of the Spirit. Yeah. Yeah. Yet right on the other hand, if your conscience is seared, it's not that good of a guide. Mm -hmm. that's right. yeah. Yeah. So you got to be careful yeah. about saying everything that somebody's conscience will let them do is, is God. Yes. Right. Right. Yes, do you know that the Bible says, notice he said that, and we just read it in the first verse we read, he said there about uh, 2 Timothy, was it? He said that their conscience was seared with a hot iron. Do you see that? So he's talking about people. I mean, when you got born again, you, got, you became a new creation in Christ, didn't you? I said, you became a new creation in Christ. Say it out loud. I became a new creation in Christ. Say this. Old things have passed away, and all things became new. They did, didn't they? But that doesn't mean the condition of your spirit is static. I think we need to teach people this. These verses say your conscience can be seared. So you got born again, you're a brand new creation, and you have a tender conscience because he's a brand new man. But, but that, that condition is not static. Your conscience can be defiled. The Bible uses that term. Uh, your con it, it can become dull. Your spirit can become dull. We just read that verse. And can take on a different condition when the, whenever it was born again. I didn't mean it's not saved. I didn't mean it doesn't have the new birth or it's not new creation. It just might not be as sensitive as it once was. Amen. Amen. It can be dull and not actually picking up what the Holy Ghost is saying. Uh, uh, but that lack of clarity is not because the Holy Ghost not, the Holy Ghost not speaking clearly. It's just that a person has overridden their conscience and it became dull. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. And it can become weak, the Bible said. A person's heart can become hard, Hebrews 3 says. It can be defiled, 1 Corinthians 8, 7. It can be insensitive, Matthew 13, 15. And so it's not static. The condition of your spirit is important. And keeping a clear conscience is important because if you let things get in there, remember the Bible said that you are God's garden? Yes, yes, says guard your heart. Yes, so yes, forth. So things can get in there yes. that begin to make your heart hard or insensitive or something like that. Maybe just unwillingness to respond to the Spirit, keep on bucking against the Holy Spirit. Yes. Right, right. right. Remember, you know, Paul said, it's, uh, Jesus said, it's hard for you to kick against the prick. That'll dull your spirit. So, so people get, uh, they kind of think, well, you know, I'm born again, so I have, I have a good spirit. Well, no, the Bible talks about four different kinds of ground. And he's talking about believers. Huh? So we need to think about these things. And one of the big issues when it comes to the condition of your heart is how you respond to your conscience. It's one of the big issues. Well, but everybody else is doing it. But if your conscience is bothering you, it's sin. Yeah. Yeah. See, their conscience is not your guide. Yeah. Amen. Your faith is your faith, not their faith. That's right. 
And you've got to guard your own spirit. You've got to guard the condition of your own spirit. Yeah, but other people seem so, so much at liberty to do it. They seem to be able to just talk about people. They seem to be able to just criticize people. They seem to be, well, they might have a dull spirit. They might have an a, a insensitive spirit. You know, it might be calloused. Amen. And I'll say this, just watch their lives and see if they keep walking in the blessings of God. Not that God's mad and won't bless them, but see, that's the condition of their spirit. It's not in a place where they can receive very well. And you don't want to pattern your life, make somebody else's standard your standard, but, and pattern your life after them whenever it causes your own conscience to become like theirs and, and, not to, and, and fail to receive like they're failing to receive. I don't want to be like people who fail to receive. Some do, but I don't want to be like that. Anybody with me? I don't want to be like that. Well, praise the Lord. I'm glad I came tonight. I'm getting blessed myself. Praise God. See, your spirit, as the born-again human spirit, he's in fellowship with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit came in and took up residency on the inside of you. And uh, he'll pass the knowledge of God on to your spirit. And, and when he does... Your conscience will pick that up and pass it on to you. Or the Holy Spirit directly will pass it on to you. Either way, if, if he's dealing with you about something, then walk in the light of that. And when others seem to have certain liberties along certain lines, but your spirit bothers you about it, follow your conscience. Amen. Follow the conviction of your own conscience. If, if your conscience smites you, respond to that. Because you don't want to become so insensitive like, like that man drinking that coffee couldn't even feel it. That's dangerous. I mean, you, you can do damage to your body. Well, amen. So uh, if your spirit speaks to you about an area, listen to it. Don't override that. All right. Now, are you still glad you came? Practice a lifestyle of, of, uh, of responding to your spirit. Now listen to this verse. This is 2 Timothy chapter 4. Excuse me. Let me find this here. Let, this is, uh, uh, I'm trying to find this verse. 1 Timothy 1. No, that's not it either. Well, let me be, uh, since I'm looking for that verse, let me just give you some of these verses. The Bible talks, and let's, let's talk about faith now. Faith, connecting faith with this. Yes. The Bible, over and over again, the New Testament especially, connects faith with a good conscience. Now, you know what a good conscience is. It's a conscience that's not bothering you about something. In other words, you respond to it. Listen to these verses. 1 Timothy 3, 9. He tells all believers to hold the mystery of the faith in a pure conscience. Amen. Say out loud, with a pure conscience. Well, before we go any further, let me, we, we, what we've said, you, you can take it all as, well, okay, I'm ruined then. I, I mean, I've overridden my spirit. Well, <laughs> we maybe we better dig you out of the hole there. there if, if you have overridden your spirit and it's bothering you and it's not pure anymore, it's, it's not a good conscience anymore. I mean, it's bothering you. You know what we mean? We all know what we're, what we're talking about. Then in that condition, there is a remedy for that. It's called the blood of Jesus. It said in Hebrews chapter 9, chapter 10, if the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of a heifer sprinkled the unclean, sanctified through the purifying of the flesh, how much more? How much more shall the blood of Christ, which is who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience. Purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. Praise God. I mean, if you've overridden your conscience and it's smiting you and bothering you and convicting you and, and, and uh, accusing you and doing all kinds of stuff, don't think you're ruined. Your faith is ruined for the rest of your life. You can get, there's a remedy for that. It's called the blood of Jesus. It's called uh, getting that under the blood, repenting of that, getting that right. And he said, the blood will cleanse and purge your conscience. Ooh, if it's purged, that means all that guilt is gone. All that, all that conviction is gone. Yes. Hallelujah. 
Well, I thought we better dig some people out of the hole there, but now uh, it says 1 Timothy 1 19 holding faith and a good conscience which some having put away concerning faith have made shipwreck so we're talking about these verses now that put faith and a good conscience together holding the 1 Timothy 3 9 holding the mystery of faith and a pure conscience and then he'll hold 1 Timothy 1 19 holding uh, faith and a good conscience which some having put away concerning faith have made shipwreck listen, listen to the amplified holding fast to faith the leaning of the entire human personality on God and absolute trust and confidence, and having a good conscience, or, or excuse me, good clear conscience. Amen. Hold fast to both of those. By rejecting and uh, thrusting from them their conscience, some individuals have made shipwreck of their faith. That says it all right there yeah. Amen. Amen. amen I remember a lady we ministered to actually this well there was two situations I'll share I'll share the one uh, I'll share the one that we experienced um, the uh, well, there was a lady coming to healing school diagnosed with cancer she's I don't know 40s or 50s and she came to be healed of course to receive her healing sit under the word and I'll never forget she just wasn't making any progress and they had at that time some of the leaders of healing school uh, prayer and healing center they had uh, started taking some of the people that came that we saw weren't making any progress just taking them one on one between the services and, and taking them into a room and just pray with them we weren't necessarily laying hands on them. We were just praying a different kind of prayer. We weren't praying the prayer of faith. We we're praying the prayer over there. James, James 5 talks about two kinds of prayer when it comes to healing. Yes, sir. Yes. The prayer of faith. And then he said the prayer that the King James says prayer means supplication makes power available. Yes. So we were doing that second one. We'd make power available. i never forget praying for this one lady. She, uh, something just come, see, but what we were doing, I'll back up. What we were doing is we were, we were praying but we were also keeping our spiritual antenna up, yes. if you know what I mean by that. We were just checking to see what the Holy Ghost had to say, anything specific the Holy Ghost had to say. And in this particular case, we kept getting in our spirits something about uh, 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 an inheritance. And, you know, sometimes the, the word of knowledge is just that. It's the word of knowledge. Yeah. It's not the whole, all the yes. information, just a piece of the information. Yes, yeah. A word is a piece of a sentence. Yes, so we just got a word yeah. of knowledge. Something yeah. about inheritance. Something about the inheritance. Something yeah. about the inheritance. Yeah. 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 And uh, so, I mean, we're praying and kept coming up to that. And, and whenever you keep coming up to that and don't do anything about it, yeah. the anointing lifts. Yes. You know you got to deal with that yes. or else... You're not going to get anywhere praying. See, that's where people miss it. They, they, they're praying and God starts talking and they go, blah, 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 blah. You know, well, then, then you're done right there. The anointing will lift. You're not going any further. So that what kept happening. We kept coming up to that. And nothing, no anointing wouldn't go any further. So we stopped. Finally, we stopped. Said, um, dear sister, uh, we, we don't know, you know, what all, you know, because she's new to us, visited us. We didn't know her. But we said, uh, something about an inheritance just keeps coming up something about an inheritance does that mean anything to you she dropped her head and she didn't want to talk about it but eventually she did she said yeah my mother died and I cheated my brother out of part of his inheritance she was the executor whatever you call that yeah. you know and, and she cheated her brother out of part of his inheritance Well, see, the Holy Ghost is putting his finger on that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, then I don't want to pray. Okay, then die then. Yeah. 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 And that's, actually, that lady drew back. And she didn't want to talk about it any further. She did share that, but she didn't want to talk about it. And she drew back. She didn't want to come to prayer anymore. Huh? It ain't worth dying over. So it's not worth dying over. But that's what people do. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. No, you can't spend it when you're dead. <laughs> Somebody said, you mean if I steal, I'm going to die? Well, this is just one unique case. 
But I'll tell you this, whenever you do something that bothers your own spirit yeah. and the spirit's putting his finger on it, yes. then your faith won't work and something's going to be lost. Yes. So, yep. because, because wherever faith's not working, Satan has his yes. way. All right, all right. That's what these verses are saying. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I'm having a good time tonight. I'm glad the Lord started talking to me about this. See, I saw some things in my life I had to just clean up. Yes, sir. Amen. Get, you know, just be accurate. Say, say exactly what, you know, don't, don't be twisting anything. So, uh, so, but that lady, see, she didn't want to, she didn't want to deal with that. Well, see, her own conscience told her, because she actually said it to us, that that was wrong. Right? Well, did she have to die? No, she had to repent. If she wanted to live, she had to repent. I don't know that she did. She sort of stumbled through a little bit of... But see, re real repentance means call your brother and get it right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. Not just say, Lord, I'm sorry. No, repentance means turns and go another direction. <laughs> Can you see how people want to slap confessions on things and just try to pull levers and push faith buttons and, and things aren't working? Can you see that? Well, praise the Lord. Well, this verse is exactly what that lady did. Listen to the Amplified again. By rejecting and thrusting from them their conscience, some individuals have made shipwreck of their faith. What does that mean, shipwreck of your faith? That means your faith will be destroyed on the rocks of that conviction. Amen. When your conscience is bothering you about something, you can't exercise faith. That, that, that conviction will just totally pull the rug out from under your faith. It's a rug pull. <laughs> Amen. When your conscience is bothering you, it's a rug pull to your faith. It just, just pulls it right out from under you. You're, you, you, just, you can go through all the motions, but you're, you're the assurance. See, faith isn't just outward. Faith is assurance of your spirit. And when something's bothering you, you're, you're not sure before God. Go to 1 John chapter number 3. 1 John 3 says the same thing. He didn't use the word conscience, but it's exactly what he's talking about. <clears throat> in 1 John chapter number 3, we'll start in verse number 16. <clears throat> Praise the Lord for the word. Yes. Praise God. It's good to be, some of, sometimes services are quiet, and sometimes it's good to be quiet. Hereby, 1 John 3, 16, we're going to read on down through, I believe, to verse 22 here. Hereby perceive we the love of God, because He laid down His life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. But uh, whosoever, uh, whoso hath this world's good, you know, material things, and sees his brother have need, and shuts up his bowels of compassion from him, how dwells the love of God in him? My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, in other words, just not talk about it, but in deed and in truth. That's practice it. Then in here, hereby we know that we are of the truth, now get this, and shall assure our hearts before Him. Now notice that, shall assure our hearts before Him. Assure is a faith word. But notice here He didn't say faith comes by hearing the word, although it does. Here He said faith comes by, by doing those things we know we're supposed to, that God's dealing with us to do. Walking in love in this case. Hereby we know that we are of the truth and shall assure our hearts before Him. If our hearts condemn us, God is greater than our heart and knows all things. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then, you ought to circle then, have we confidence towards God. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of Him because we keep His commandments and do those things that are pleasing in His sight. Well, assurance is another word for faith. He talks about assuring our hearts before Him. In other words, he's saying a man can't exercise faith against these, these things that are bothering you in your conscience. He's not, he didn't use the word conscience, but that's what he's talking about. Isn't that what he's talking about? And so keep a clear conscience so your faith will work. Amen. Now, it's a little like when you're... When you're when, when you, you, your spirit's bothering you about something and you don't deal with it, we know the remedy for that. It's the blood of Jesus, getting it right. But uh, then it's a little like it, when our spirit's bothering us, our faith is like injured, so to speak. Yeah. 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 It's a little like an injured quarterback. I mean, he's a good quarterback, maybe just plays excellently. But if he gets injured, he can't, he can't yeah. perform as a quarterback. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. right? Yeah. 
And that's the way faith is. He, uh, just like that quarterback really can't carry out his responsibilities on the field. Isn't that right? And anytime your faith is injured, then you're not, it's not going to be able to carry out what it was given to you to do in your life. I don't want that for me because wherever my faith's not working, that's where the devil gets in. That's how you resist him in faith. First John, First Peter uh, 5, 7. Resist him steadfast in faith. You don't resist him with your good looks. I mean, we are all good looking, but that doesn't work. <laughs> I should have got a lot of amens. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. So the devil isn't even to blame whenever we, we get ourselves in these situations. Well, the devil's, he's hindering me. No you've injured your faith. And the devil didn't really have much to do with it. Amen. And so, you know, don't give the devil the opportunity like that. Don't, don't, what do I mean? Don't, don't thrust your conscience from you. That verse said, thrust it from them, their conscience. They make shipwreck of their faith. Don't do that. When your conscience is talking to you, don't push it away. You injure your faith. Because what you're getting ready to do is going to pull the rug out from under. It's going to injure your, it's going to, it's going to take the confidence that you have before God and just jerk it out from underneath it. And now rather than stand, you can't stand in the presence of God at all. You're not, you're not, you're not before him with a clear conscience. Pastor Jay, that's good preaching. Amen. 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 Can you see how people try to go through motions of things and praise the Lord. So cultivate a good conscience. Make it something that's very important to you. Always listen to him. I mean, start tuning up on this. I, I don't know why God dealt with me about this. Uh, well, I, he's, he's talking to my own life, but I don't know why he's having me preach this. I don't know of anybody that, you know, I'm not gunning for anybody. I don't know of anything. We all know within our own spirit. Yes, Amen. 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 Our spirit talks to us. Amen. Praise the Lord. And we don't want to dull that, do we? We don't want to become seared in our conscience. And so a lot of people don't pay enough attention to this when it comes to their faith life. And uh, so that's one reason things aren't working. One of the great failures of the intellectual age we live in is that uh, people don't really cultivate the human spirit. When I say cultivate, I mean develop him. God is a spirit. He talks to our spirits. He doesn't talk with our mind. See, our conscience can tell us something. Our mind will say, oh, no, no. I mean, that's, but see, God doesn't talk to your mind. He talks to your, con yes, your, your spirit. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. And we need to cultivate that, that part of our being. We need to develop him. You can develop your spirit just like you can develop your body or develop your mind. Amen. That's what church ought to be. Spirit develop center. Develop people's human spirits. See, down at the university, they're not developing people's spirits. They're developing people's intellect. Down at the gym, they're not developing people's spirits. Nothing wrong with the gym. Nothing wrong with the university, per se. But down at the gym, they're not developing the human spirit. They're developing the body. A lot of people emphasize developing the mind and developing the body when they totally neglect the human spirit. All right, come on. And so, and so this part of man doesn't dominate him like he should, and he gets himself in trouble. Amen, Pastor Jay. That's good preaching. And that's one of the failures of these, this intellectual age. They have an educated head and a developed body, but their spirit has never really grown. And so, and so he, he's trying to get their attention. And, and they won't listen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Don't let it be you or I. Let's keep on developing our human spirit. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm glad I came tonight. How about you? So let's finish this up about faith here. We read some verses. The end of the commandment is uh, 1 Timothy 1, 5 is another one. The end of the commandment is charity out of a pure heart and of a good conscience and of faith unfeigned. See, conscience, good, clean, clean conscience and faith. Then 1 Timothy 1, 19, holding faith and a good conscience. 
which some have put away concerning faith and made shipwreck. We read that one. And we read Hebrews, uh, I mean we read 1 Timothy 3, 9. Then Hebrews 10, 22, let us draw near with a, tr a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think a better way to say that is a guilty conscience. Yeah. That's the blood that sprinkles, it cleanses us from a guilty conscience. Having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. That's the water of the Word. So you can't separate faith from being led by the Spirit. You can't separate faith from the condition of your conscience. That's what these verses say. I don't know how many of them there were there. It puts faith and the good conscience together. I think we may have read seven or eight of them there. Well, then they're connected. <laughs> don't, don't, try to be develop, don't try to be a faith person and neglecting your conscience. It won't work. All right, so with that in mind, let's wrap this up here. You've heard the statement, you can't separate faith from being led by the Spirit. Have you heard that? Yeah. Well, what does that mean? That means you can go through all the motions of faith, but if your Spirit is telling you something other than what you're believing God for, you can't override that. Isn't that right? It just, it, it just seems like faith, just like a slippery pig, just can't get a hold of it. It's a little like going to the bank, trying to withdraw money, because they make you sign, you know. Uh -huh. And there they got pens nowadays, but yeah. let's say that if they didn't have any pens, yeah. and you'd go to the bank trying to withdraw money, and you, you don't have a pen to sign. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I mean, you're so close. Yes, sir. The money's right there. Yeah. You can even yeah. see it in their drawer. Yeah, yeah. come on. Yeah. Percentage of it's, you know, registered yeah. on your account, and that's yeah. yours. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. You're so close. So close. Yeah. Come on. But you just don't have the pen to sign yes, for sir. it. Yeah. Come on. It's come good. on. Yep. That's what it's like, you, you know, trying to exercise faith for to receive something that really is yours. Yeah. Yeah. But you just, your conscience is bothering you. Yeah. And so it's just like you just can't, you just, you're so close, but you just can't quite get it. Yeah. Because, because your faith really got the rug pulled out from under it. Yeah. It's coming clear tonight, isn't it? Yeah. So what does it mean you can't be, you can't separate faith from being led by the Spirit? Well, it means a number of things. It means if the Spirit leads you in one direction. Now, when we say the Spirit leads you, you could also include your conscience as talking to you about something. Yeah. You realize there's a difference, but, but we're sort of saying it all together right now. If your Spirit leads you in one direction, you can't, you'll never have faith to go another direction. Right. You know, let's say your Spirit tells you not to, uh, well, let's say your Spirit tells you to go, that where you are in faith, you need to go have an operation. You know, yes, sir. well, no, I'm just going to believe God. But your spirit kept, keeps saying you're not there. You're not there. Yeah. Now, I'm not saying you couldn't be. Right. And I'm not saying that's not, God's not saying that's not available. Yeah. But he's saying you're not there. Yeah. And depending on what the condition is, yeah. if something is terminal, yep. yeah. you might not have time to get there. That's right. Because that's right. yes, yeah. it takes time to develop faith. Yes. I don't mean forever. Some people, they think it takes forever. Like the, the devil will never tell them they've got enough faith. Right, right. So there's two sides to this. Right. But yeah, right on the other hand, there's times where the Spirit will say, no, you just need to go have an operation. I've, I've been in that situation. Yeah. Yes, sir. Amen. Live to, live to preach another day. Praise God. Right. Mine wasn't life-threatening, but <laughs> amen. Well, actually, it could have been eventually, but yeah, could have been. <laughs> Thank God for the Word. Amen. So if the Spirit's leading you one direction, you'll never have faith. You can go through all the motions, yeah. but you can't really do it with assurance in your heart because your Spirit's telling you something different. Does that make sense? Yeah. So another thing it means that the Spirit will never lead you beyond your measure of faith. We all have faith in measure, and we're developing our faith, and it's growing, but all of us have it in measure. And uh, you, you and I cannot exercise faith beyond our, our, our we can't, the Little Spirit will never lead us beyond our measure of faith. I told you the story of us buying furniture years ago, the first time we ever bought furniture, we were just, just had a bunch of cheap stuff. I was trying to get the Lord to tell me whether to put it on a credit card or not, because I didn't have any money to pay cash. But I, or, or should we believe God for the money to pay cash? And he never would say anything to me. Yeah. Remember that? Yeah. After a while, I got a clue. And I said, let's get this conversation started one way or another. So I said, Lord, you're not saying anything to me. Yeah. I thought maybe we could back up and start there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You ever notice how often you have to know the voice of the Spirit in order to do these things? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You need to emphasize that more in your life. Yes, sir. 
So, so I said, Lord, you're not saying anything. He said, yeah, it's because I'm not going to. He said, you're trying to get me to answer a question that only you can answer. He said, where's your faith? Yeah. Well, I knew where my faith was. I didn't have the faith to believe God for all the money for the furniture. Right. At that time, right. now I could do it 10 times over. Right. 20 times over God. believe God but back then I couldn't see faith grows yes. but back then I couldn't yes. amen. amen so I said Lord well that answers my question I went and got their credit card <laughs> down at the furniture place because we needed furniture and we paid it off in 7900 easy payments you know <laughs> no I'm kidding <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> we actually paid it off early. We started using our faith to make the payment, yeah. and then we started increasing it. I was just joking about the, but I'm just saying how they say it, you know. Praise God. So, see, he'll never lead you beyond your measure of faith. Another thing that this means, we could spend a lot of time on that, uh, the application of the Word is to be at the leading of the Spirit. Somebody said, just stand on the Word. Well, it's a big book. Which part do you stand on? You're going to have to be led. Amen. What, do you, what part do you stand on? And number four, faith is not for overriding your spirit or taking the place of following your spirit. People, they try to do that. They try to override what their spirit knows. Isn't that right? And, and, and their spirit's trying to tell them something, but, but, but it, just, it just doesn't work. That's not what faith's for. Right, right. Faith is to follow the Spirit. Yes, yeah. And if you'll follow the Spirit and use your faith to follow the Spirit, He'll guide you right into what belongs to you. Yes. He's good. Yes. Thank God for it. Oh, Amen. Yeah. Amen. Well, did you get anything out of that tonight? Yes. You could add another one. That's the fourth one, but you could add another one. Another thing that it means you can't separate faith from being led by the Spirit. When the Spirit guides you, you have to trust Him. If you're going to see the manifestation of God's will come to pass, you can't, you, you, you have to, when the Spirit leads you into something, or your, your conscience, let's put it this way, your conscience, this is another way, your conscience is talking to you about something. You have to trust that. Yeah. That means you can't separate, that's what, yeah. you can't separate faith from being led of the Spirit or, or following your conscience. You can't separate, you have to trust what He's saying to you. Yeah, but I don't want it to be that way. Well, we didn't ask of God. God didn't ask you if you wanted it to be that. He just told you what it was. Yes, sir. Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. You know, some people, they try to, you can stand with me, I'm done. They try, they try, they're, they're believing God for something. And the spirit within them, because they are believing God, he starts guiding them to the answer. He starts guiding them to where the supply is. But they say, no, 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 I'm believing God. You can't do that. I mean, he's trying to show you where the answer is. In fact, when you start believing God, you need to keep your spiritual antenna up real good. Because incoming, incoming, direction, directions, incoming. <laughs> Amen. Because you're believing God. He's on, he'll honor that faith and start directing you to the supply, directing you to where the need is met. But you, if you try to separate faith from being led of the Spirit, you'll struggle a lot. You'll wonder why. Well, I'm believing God. Why? Well, see, I'll tell you why. He tried to lead you, but you wouldn't follow. We're learning. Tell your neighbor we are learning more. We're learning more. I don't believe he's a, ever created any failures. We've created some failures, <laughs> but God has never failed. We start believing God, God will faithfully start, start moving, and start working, and start guiding, and start showing us what to do, showing us where the supply is. He's faithful. He'll do it every single time. Have we always been good at following? No, but we're getting better. I don't want as many bumps and bruises as I used to get. In my life, in my faith, in my finances, in any area of my life. I don't want all those bumps. I want to just be better at listening and following. Yes. Yes. And if my conscience convicts me, I just stop right there and I get that right. Yes. Yes. Praise God. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 I, I don't know about you. I preach myself happy tonight. Hallelujah. 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 Tell your neighbor, I don't know who it was for. It could have been for you or me. <laughs> 
Actually, it could be for all of us. And we're going to all take it. Amen. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Jesus said, let your yes be yes and your no, no. Whatever's more than that is sin. You ever said something and then don't follow through with it? Your conscience starts bothering you, doesn't it? Yeah, it starts bothering you. Well, get that right and just go on in the blessings of God. 